ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಆಪಿ ಚೇತ್ಸುರಾಚಾರ ಪಾಚತೆ ಮಾಂ ಅನನ್ಯ ಪಾಕ್ ಸಾತುರೇವ ಸಮಂತವ್ಯ ಸಾಮ್ಯಾಗ್ ವ್ಯವಸಿತ ಹಿ ಸಹ ಆಪಿ ಈವನ್ ಚೈತ್ ಇಫ್ ಸುತುರಾಚಾರ ಒನ್ ಕಮಿಟ್ಸ್ ದ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ದ ಪೌನಬಲ್ ಆಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ Pachate is engaged in devotional service. Mam unto me, Ananya Bhak, without deviation. Sadhu, a saint. Eva, certainly. Saha, he. Mantavya is to be considered. Samyak, completely. Vyavasitaha, situated in determination. He, certainly. Saha, he. Translation, Purpur, by his divine grace, Sila Prabhupada, Ki Jai. Even if one commits the most abominable action, if he is engaged in devotional service, he is to be considered saintly, because he is properly situated in his determination. Purport. The words su durachara used in this verse is very significant and we should understand it properly. When a living entity is conditioned, he has two kinds of activities. One is conditional and the other is constitutional. As for protecting the body or abiding by the rules of society and state, certainly there are different activities, even for the devotees, in connection with the conditional life. And such activities are called conditional. Besides this, the living entity who is fully conscious of his spiritual nature and is engaged in Krishna consciousness, or the devotional service of the Lord, has activities which are called transcendental. Such activities are performed in his constitutional position and they are technically called devotional service. <coughs> Now in the conditioned state, sometimes devotional service and the uh, conditional service in relation to the body will parallel one another. But then again, sometimes these activities become opposed to one another. As far as possible, a devotee is very cautious so that he does not do anything that could disrupt his wholesome condition. He knows that perfection in his activities depends on his progressive realization of Krishna consciousness. Sometimes, however, It may be seen that the person in Krishna consciousness commits some act which may be taken as most abominable socially or politically. Uh, but such a temporary fall down does not disqualify him. In the Srimad Bhagavatam it is stated that if a person falls down but is wholeheartedly engaged in the transcendental service of the Lord, the Supreme Lord, Uh, the Lord, being situated within his heart, purifies him and excuses him from that abomination. Uh, the material contamination is so strong that even a yogi fully engaged in the service of the Lord sometimes becomes ensnared. But Krishna consciousness is so strong that such an occasional fall down is at once rectified. Therefore, the process of devotional service is always a success. 
Namen should uh, deride a devotee for some accidental fall down from the ideal path. For, as explained in the next verse, such occasional fall downs will be stopped in due course as soon as the devotee is completely situated in Krishna consciousness. Therefore, a person who is situated in Krishna consciousness and is engaged with the termination in the process of chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, should be considered to be in the transcendental position, even if by chance or accident he is uh, found to have fallen. The words Sadur Eva, he is saintly, are very empha emphatic. They are a warning to the non-devotees that because of an accidental fall down, a devotee should not be derided. He should still be considered saintly if he has accidentally fall down, fallen down. And the word mantavya is still, still more emphatic. If one does not follow this rule and derides a devotee for his ac accidental fall down, then one is disobeying the order of the Supreme Lord. The only qualification of a devotee is to be unflinchingly and exclusively engaged in devotional service. And then in the Singha Purana, the following statement is given. Bhagavati Saharao Ananya Chaita Risha Malinopi Pira Chaita Manushyaha Mahisha Shakalusha Chabikata Chit Timira Parapavatam Upaiti Chandra. The meaning is that even if one fully engaged in the devotional service of the Lord is sometimes found engaged in abominable activities. These activities should be considered to be like the, the, the spots that resemble the mark of a rabbit of the moon, on the moon. Such spots do not become an impediment to the diffusion of moonlight. Similarly, the accidental fall down of a devotee from the path of saintly character does not make him abominable. On the other hand, one should not misunderstand that a devotee is transcendent, in transcendental devotional service can act in all kinds of abominable ways. This verse only refers to an accident due to the strong power of material con connections. Devotional service is more or less a declaration of war against the illusory energy. As long as one is not strong enough to fight the illusory energy, there may be accidental fall downs. But when one is strong enough, he is no longer subjected to such fall, down, fall downs, as I previously explained. No one should take advantage of this verse and commit nonsense and think that he is still a devotee. Uh, if he does not improve in his character by devotional service, then it is to be understood that he is not a high devotee. Apichetsu Dracharu Pachete Mammanan Yabak Satureva Samantavya Samyak Vyavasitohi Saha. Even if one commits the most abominable action, if he is engaged in devotional service, he is to be considered saintly because he is properly situated in his determination. Omagyati Maranya Syakananchana Zalakyam Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Karavena Maha <coughs> Sometimes 
So this is in connection with uh, or relation with the previous verse, text 29. Krishna says yesterday's verse. Samoham sarva bhuteshu namet veshtyo stina priya yeva chanti tumam bhaktya mayi teteshu chapi aham. I envy no one, nor I'm partial to anyone. I'm equal to all, but whoever renders service unto me in devotion is a friend, is a friend, huh? is a friend, is in me, and I'm also a friend to him. Huh? But whoever renders service unto me, huh? That's the crucial point here. Huh? Yeah, yeah. That means the crucial point, crucial, the, the, the very essential point here is uh, if one engages in devotional service to Krishna. This is the highest form of religion. Huh? Sarva dharma parityacham mam me kam sharanam racha aham tvam sarva papebhyo moksha shyami masu cha At the end of the Bhagavad Gita in the 18th chapter, text 66. Yeah, Krishna uh, is uh, telling uh, hear you. Krishna is telling that uh, Whoever surrenders unto him, sarva dharma paritya cham, mam me kam sharanam. Hey, Prabhuji. So, whoever gives up his uh, occupations, his uh, duties in the Varnashram Dharma system, and is uh, surrendering unto Krishna. Uh, Krishna is taking responsibility for him. So he doesn't have to fear anymore uh, for, uh, that, uh, about his future and about his maintenance. His process is called Sharanagati. Uh, as somebody who is uh, following Sharanagati, that means full surrender to the lotus feet of Krishna. He doesn't have to fear about or be in anxiety about his future, or about his uh, destiny and about his life. Because Krishna personally uh, promises, I will take care. Sarva dharma paritya cham, mam me kam sharam racha, aham tvam sarva papebhyo, moksha shyami, masu cha. I'm taking care. Uh, I'm responsible even for his sins and for his activities. Uh, so a, de a devotee uh, is relieved from all kinds of uh, sinful activities because uh, Krishna personally is taking care for the devotee's life. It's natural. Uh, like, um, like the father loves his son. Whatever activities his son is uh, doing, if it is pleasing or not so much pleasing, even if he becomes a rascal, still the father loves him. Uh, he never rejects him. Uh, and he always uh, hopes that the son will come again, become righteous, and will uh, connect with the father again. Uh, in Bible also this example is given uh, of the lost son who came back. Uh, after a long time. So he left his father and then, the fa and then he came back and then the father accepted him uh, and gave him a reception even more than his own son. Uh, gave him so much attention. So the, those with dedicated sons, they ask the father, why you give him so much attention? Uh, and the father, father, he cries and he says, you don't understand, he, he was my lost son. And he came back. You always stayed with me. Uh, you never left me. So everything is normal amongst us, you know. But here is somebody is, who was lost, but he came back. So the father always taking care for him because he loves his son. 
and he and he is very happy when his son is uh, ultimately turning his face and his attention to him again. So Krishna in uh, also uh, in Bhagavatam also the state devashi putapta rinampi trinam nakin karanayam rinicharacham sarvatmanayam sharanam sharanyam gatomukunda paririta katam uh, there is stated that uh, an, uh, a devotee or a personality who is uh, uh, surrendering to Krishna again Sharanam, taking shelter in Krishna as a, a Krishna is my shelter, Krishna is my uh, everything. He is not responsible responsible anymore. He has no more duties to the forefathers, to the sages, to the demigods, uh, to the society, to the family. Uh, normally we always have uh, duties, we have responsibility uh, for the demigods, for the sages, for the uh, society. So we have obligations. Uh. But uh, if somebody becomes a devotee, giving his life to Krishna, he doesn't have this re responsibility uh, anymore because his only responsibility is to please Krishna and to serve him. And for many saintly persons in the past and actually all the time, they're leaving home, they uh, leave, leaving the society's uh, engagements and they're uh, go going on the way looking after the truth. Uh, after God. It's in Christian faith like that, it's in, in the Vedic culture uh, like that, in the Buddhistic culture it, it is like that. Buddha himself, uh, he was a prince and he was looking after the truth. So he left his kingdom, although he was born as a prince. And uh, so he, he, uh, he wanted to find out what, what is, uh, is there something abo above birth, old age, disease and death? Uh, this is the problem. Uh, Krishna also says the problem of life is the repetition of birth, old age, disease and death. We all have to face. There's no exception. Poor man, ri rich man. High born, low born. Uh, he's low. Is equal. It's it's guilty. I uh, would say it's a uh, uh, not guilty. Uh, is uh, what is the word? Uh, it's applicable for everyone. Uh, nobody can cross over that old age disease like that and born to be born again. We, ca we cannot avoid this is suffering. Jamma mrityo charavyadi dukkha doshanudarsana. Uh, Krishna also tells in the Gita, in the beginning, that uh, these four miseries, birth, old age, disease and death, uh, th this misery, uh, we, cannot, we cannot overcome by in, in material way, by our own force. We can only uh, overcome it by surrendering to Krishna. If we're surrendering to Krishna, uh, then uh, this uh, big ocean of birth and death uh, shrinks to the size of hoofprint of a calf, Patsapadam. Samashit te ye patava plavam, Mahapadam punya yashomurarer, pavam budir vatsa, param padam, 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 yat vibatam natesham. It shrinks uh, to hoofprint of a calf. On our own, we cannot cross over the ocean of birth and death, but if we are surrendering to Krishna, lotus feet, was like a boat, and then successfully we can cross over the ocean without becoming touched by it. But sometimes, uh, due, as Prabhupada is pointing out, due to uh, conditioning, of material nature, because we all have, bo we are all born according to our past life activities. Actually, this body, with all our nature and qualities, and 
weaknesses is a manifestation or a fruit from previous life. It's called Pararapta Karma. Everyone has this Pararapta Karma and uh, therefore we are born in certain family with certain qualification and also certain um, handicaps. So that's natural. That's natural to be born in the material world like that. So nobody is really perfect. Everyone is uh, born with a certain defect. And Krishna knows about that. So we all have weaknesses. We have all uh, handicaps. Because to accept the material body means a handicap. Uh, because we also have a mind. And the mind has desires and has uh, uh, contemplations of sense objects. Dhyayata avishayam pumsham sango stesha bachayate sangacha jayate kama kama krodha bachayate krodha pavati samoha samoha smriti viprama smriti bramsa pudi nasho pudi nasha pranashati. That's the process Krishna explains in the Gita. But everything starts by contemplating the sense objects and by the contemplating of sensual objects, uh, desires manifest. Uh, and uh, lust, lust arises, karma, and from lust, anger, wrath. Uh, therefore, the whole material principle is uh, based on lust and anger. And, and it comes from contemplation, uh, from contemplating the sense objects. Uh. Uh, we are all greedy for something. Uh. And therefore, we are looking at certain things and we are de developing desire to also possess that, to, to attain it. By hook and by crook. Uh. Uh, we, when, because senses and the mind become so strong, even by criminal way or unrighteous way, one will try to get it, uh, to fulfill this desire. But desire can never become satisfied Therefore, when the desire is uh, frustrated uh, and not uh, really become pleased by the object we, we aspiring, uh, aspired for or endeavored for, we become angry. Uh, and from anger, krodha, bhavati, samoha, uh, illusion appear. Uh, samoha, smriti, viprama. Uh, then, and then if you are in illusion, in maya, bewildered by the uh, uh, illusory energy, uh, one becomes covered and our memory goes lost. Smriti Brahma, Buddhi Pranashati, and then the intelligence goes lost and then we are in the whirlpool of material existence. Uh, so that's uh, in short how Krishna explains the downfall from the pure spirit soul to the, to the ta ta rajas and tamaguna. Uh. So this, uh, if we are coming in contact with the rajas and tamaguna, uh, we naturally uh, become, uh, we are in this whirlpool of this uh, material existence. And this, if you are in a whirlpool, uh, not in a, I would say, artificial one, you know, whirlpool, you know, for well wellness, it's not this whirlpool we're speaking about. It's a whirlpool is very dangerous. Uh, the a whirlpool who is in the in the middle of a of a of a of the river or uh, also the sea. They have many these whirlpools. Uh, it's like a soak, you know. If you come in such a whirlpool, you know you are lost. Even if you are a very good swimmer, uh, you are practically are killed. Uh, you, use, you, lose, you lose your life. You cannot escape from it. Many die every year in the Ganga, uh, in Mayapur. Uh, they think we are very good swimmers and they try to go there in the Ganga. Uh, they don't come back because they come in these uh, whirlpools and in these swift currents uh, of the river. Therefore, Chanakya Pandit say, never trust the river. Never trust the water. 
because uh, if you are not uh, careful with the water element, uh, you are drowned. Like I have one good devotee we know, Head uh, Puchari, and he was here in Yamuna uh, many years ago in the 90s. And he was a little too much into passion and in sporting in the Yamuna, and he broke his neck. And he's not, even now, he's, he t fortunately didn't die, but he's paralyzed. Uh, many devotees also die in the Yamuna because of uh, jumping in it or go go entering in dangerous places. So the river uh, is a very dangerous ocean, water element can be very dangerous. So we have to be very careful, like in Chakanapuri. Yeah? You think uh, there is uh, only little water, very shallow, no? and you enter in it, you know, and then suddenly the water comes and, uh, and uh, takes you out uh, on the feet away underneath the ground, uh, from you, where you're standing on, and suddenly you're mid middle in the ocean there. <laughs> and then another wave comes and pushes you completely down. So many, so many uh, people also die, breaking neck. Uh, because sometimes the ocean looks like very shallow, and sometimes big. And then again, pu pushes you down, you know, and then there's no more water there, on the ground. This is material existence. Uh, I thought this material existence is a dangerous place. Uh, you should never trust. Uh, only Krishna's lotus feet are uh, the, the safe shelter. And even if by chance, you know, we're making uh, uh, out of habit, we have some uh, temporary fall down, and or deviation, uh, Krishna is n is not uh, taking this seriously. Th there's this famous uh, uh, f famous um, Bhagavatam verse. I wanted to read to you from Svapada Mulam verse from 11th Canto. Uh, Svapada Mulam Pachate Priyasya Tyaktanya Pavasya Hari Paresha Vikarma Vikarma Yach Chotpati Tam Katanchit Tunoti Sarvam Ritisani Vishta from 11 Canto, 5th chapter, text 42. You hear me? Okay. What, um, this is from uh, Navayogendra speaking, one, one of the great sages of nine. What, uh, I think Karapachan, Muni. One who has thus given up all other engagements and has take, taken full shelter at the lotus feet of, of Hari, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is very dear to the Lord. Indeed, if such a surrendered soul accidentally commits uh, some sinful activity, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is seated within everyone's heart, immediately takes away the reaction of such a sin. Ah. So it's very, very nice verse. Uh, the Krishna is within the heart. Although he is equal to everyone, as we heard in previous verse from the Gita, Samaham Sarvabhutesho Natvesha Natchanapriya, he is not in favor of anyone, he is not partial to anyone. But he says, whoever surrenders unto me, I am personally taking care for him, for his life. So in that uh, connection, we can uh, understand that uh, uh, Krishna from, from within, the super soul, he is always in transcendental position. And he is uh, the well-wisher of his devotees. He's the protector of his devotees. So even, uh, even uh, if they have some allurement or some artificial or uh, temporary uh, fall down or deviation, uh, Krishna may be not stopping him. So uh, he will do, he let him do, but he also gives him the purification. That's stated also in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Huh? Krishna says, I'm very intelligent. 
if a fool if a foolish devotee thinks uh, uh, let let me enjoy this or let me enjoy that and please Krishna uh, fulfill this my desire I give him uh, I, I, I give to him or to her this kind of uh, of um, object of sense gratification but if he comes again and again with a similar desire please Krishna uh, because we are servants you know of Krishna but uh, if the servant forgets that we actually servant and accept and uh, take uh, Krishna as our servant uh, as our supplier uh, and Krishna thinks, you know, I'm, I'm uh, not a fool. Uh, he is fool, he's murka. Uh, but I'm very intelligent. I'm very intelligent, uh, Krishna says. So I, I'm, I want to uh, make this uh, ultimately this devotee uh, fortunate. Now he's foolish and unfortunate because of his uh, activities, of his desires. And I'm Krishna. I'm ultimately uh, the full, uh, I'll say the object of uh, highest uh, pleasure. I want to give him the highest pleasure. I, do, I want to give him nectar. But sometimes a devotee wants to have the poison. But Krishna thinks I want to give him nectar. Ultimately, he took shelter by me. I didn't forget. He forgot. He became bewildered by Maya uh, for some time, except, uh, taking this and that and always uh, uh, getting material fulfillment of desires. So he always asked for poison. Uh, but I am the reservoir of nectar. I can give him so much nectar, but how can I give him nectar? In the one sense, Krishna doesn't want to reject such a devotee, where, where he wants to put him. Because ultimately everyone, everything is in Krishna. And Krishna is in everyone's heart. And he is a well-wisher well of all his devot of devotees who took shelter in him. That's his nature. His special nature uh, is Bhakta Vatsalya. But Krishna is always very kind to his devotees. Even one time surrendering unto him, Krishna, from this day on, I belong to you. Lord Ramachandra, he says, that person doesn't have to uh, care for his life anymore. I personally take care, uh, even if he's my enemy. Uh. Ravana had one brother, Bibisan. Oh, Bibisan, brother of Ravana, is also Bibisan. Das. So this Bibisan, uh, the brother. He was a Rakshasa. But actually he was a Rakshasa by birth, but in heart he was devotee. And he gave Ramachandra advice. Uh, not Ramachandra, uh, Ravana, his brother, advice. Don't steal Sita. Give Sita back to Ram. Otherwise you are destroyed. My dear brother, so he gave him good advice, but what happens if, uh, if, uh, if one gives a fool a good advice? He becomes angry at you. He becomes your enemy. So Ravana, he, he chastised his brother. He completely rejected him from all his positions. Uh, and he didn't want to have him as brother anymore. And... Uh, Bibi-san, because he didn't uh, want to have such a brother, he rejected him. And he went to the camp of Ramachandra. And when he came to the camp of Ramachandra, taking shelter at lo Lord Ramachandra's lotus feet, Hanuman and other monkeys, soldiers and devotees of Ram, they told, he's a spy. He's from the enemy side. He's Ravana's brother, we should kill him. But Ramachandra, he told, no. Yet, he shall not be killed, because it's my promise that whoever takes shelter on my lotus feet, even once, uh, 
I will protect him. I will accept him as my servant. And that's my eternal promise. Uh, and I will never break that promise. Count it, and that's then quoted in the next verse. Uh, you, Arjuna, you tell to the people, to all the non-believers who think that the devotee is sinful, you tell them you know, that Kantiya Pratichani hi Name Bhakta Pranashati that my devotee will never be vanquished. I personally remove all his uh, impurities from the heart. Therefore, uh, to come to the CC verse, Chaitanya Chaitamrita verse, where Krishna says, I'm not fool, I'm intelligent. If a foolish person always uh, comes to me with material desires, I will take him the desires away. I, give, I take him all these uh, objects of sense gratification away, so that becomes penniless, that he is a pauper, pauper. Huh? Without money, without family leaves him, ha he loses house, money, and then if he loses house and money and job, family has no more interest in him, they reject him, and then he is alone here. Huh? And if he is alone here, you know, then he only has one shelter, ultimately can cry, cry out, hey Krishna, hey Govinda, huh? and he is uh, taking fully shelter in Krishna. And that is what Krishna is waiting for. Uh, the, uh, the devotee is, and he's always ready, Krishna is always ready, because Krishna is always our friend. Only we don't accept him as friend, we don't want to have it as truth. We have no faith in it, and because of la lack of faith in Krishna as friend, uh, we become bewildered by Maya. Therefore we are in the whirlpool of material existence, and we try to find friendship, uh, so-called friendship in this material world in, in the name of fa family, friendship, society, and love. Uh, but this is an illusion. It's temporary. It has a beginning and end. The ultimate, the ultimate friend is only Krishna. <coughs> uh, and Krishna is in everyone's heart. He's always with us and he always is, is uh, well-wishing for us. He's never condemning. Krishna never curses. Uh, if a Krishna in the battlefield of Kurukshetra, he told, I will not take part in the battle. But I will take your side, Arjuna. I will be your charioteer, Sarati. Huh? But I will not take part in the fight. Huh? Duryodhan, actually, uh, the, the uh, story is, Krishna was in Dvaraka. And uh, Krishna, he uh, told, Whoever comes the next in the next morning to me, I will fulfill him this desire. So Duryodhan, who was in Hastinapur, he heard about that, and he was with the very with the fastest horses, you know, he uh, he travelled to Dwaraka, and he was a little uh, uh, earlier before in, in Krishna's room than Arjuna. Arjuna came and Duryodhan came. But Arjuna was faster. Everyone chastised Arjuna. Why you are fast? Why you, why you came too late? Uh, you should be uh, on time, not too late. Uh, it's a very important uh, decision now, a uh, very thing what, uh, it, it, uh, it's what's happening. Uh, they, they have to choose between the Krishna's army and Krishna himself. But Duridan, because he was a non-devotee, he made a mistake. He thought Krishna is lying in his bed, beautiful bed, very relaxed, like that. Huh? And uh, so when he wakes up, of course he will look on the side. Huh? So I will sit on his side and then I will, he will ask me, Oh Duridan, nice to see you. Uh, what is your desire? How you decided? So Arjuna came a little late. And anyway, Arjuna took uh, his shelter on Krishna's lotus feet, very humbly. He was uh, there meditating un uh, until Krishna was uh, waking up. To it on Krishna's head. Uh. So when Krishna wakes up, then naturally, of course, he doesn't look who is on his side. 
on his head side, he looks who is, who is on his feet. Huh? Because whoever is on his feet must be his devotee. He cannot be a non-devotee, because non-devotees have no interest in Krishna's lotus feet. Huh? So, so he saw Arjuna, oh Arjuna, <coughs> Hare Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> Nice to see you. Good morning. Uh, what is your desire? What you uh, decided? Uh, um, Arjuna said, and that's what what uh, Duridan hoped. I only want to have you. You sure, Arjuna? Don't want to have my army, a whole Akshahini, uh, my uh, Narayana army. Uh, they are all very powerful, practically unconquerable warriors, not, almost not different from Narayana, from Lord Vishnu. They are all ex with, uh, we say, um, equipped with uh, extraordinary powers. No, only I like, like you. I only want to have you. Duridan, he was uh, very happy. Uh, this, uh, because uh, he thought, now it's anyway, the, the war will be on our side, the victory. Because we will have e 11 Akshahinis, and this Panda was only 7. Uh, so in this way, uh, he got the extra army from Krishna's army, and uh, Arjuna got Krishna. But Krishna t told, I will not part to participate in the war. But everyone already knew from the sages and from the knowers of the who Krishna is, those uh, who are faithful in Krishna, wherever there is Krishna, there is victory. Uh, there is no loss. Uh, there is no defeat. Even if, e even if you are in minority. Uh, even if you are in lesser power. Uh, so in this way, Krishna, he became the charioteer of uh, Arjuna. And on the battlefield, there were many unrighteous things happened. Uh, uh, the Kaura was especially the condemned, although they, they made them, themselves so, ma so many deviations and war crimes. Uh, but they all accused the Pandavas. Uh, the first one was... Uh, uh, because of it happened because of Drona, Drona Charya. He was the guru, martial art guru of the of the of uh, Arjuna and the all the Pandavas and also the Kauravas. And uh, he was practically invincible. Nobody could kill him. Uh, he took the side against the Pandavas. He was on on Duryodhan's side. And he became every day more outrageous, and more powerful, and they ki killed uh, hundred thousands of, of uh, thousands and hundred thousands of soldiers every every day. So Krishna, he thought, you know, he has to be killed, but how we can kill him? Uh, because he's invincible. Uh, he's the best of all, because he's your teacher. How can the disciple be better than the teacher? <laughs> so. Krishna told to Yudhishthir, uh, actually first to Bhima, you go to Drona and tell him Ashvatama is dead. Uh, because only the, the, that was the uh, Drona, Drona's um, uh, words, only if I hear something very inauspicious, then I will, then I will lie down all my uh, arms, my weapons, and then some uh, Arjuna, uh, or how's it, not Arjuna, Trishta uh, Dhyumna, who, who was born as his enemy, can kill me. He knew about that. Huh? And he was also his disciple, Trishta Dhyumna. And although, although Drona Charya, he knew that Trishta Dhyumna will, is born to kill him from the fire, from Yagya, he appeared. He accepted him as disciple. That is Brahmana. Uh, even an enemy comes to you, he, te he teaches him all the arts. So anyway, so only the bad news uh, could uh, 
conquer Drona. So Krishna told Bhima, go to Drona. <laughs> Ashvatam is dead because his name of his son. Uh, but then when Drona heard from Bhima, he told, who told? Bhima. No. I, I, I don't can believe that. Because b if Bhima speaks, that means there's some cheating behind. He didn't have faith in Bhima. Only if, if uh, uh, Yudhishthir will come. Because Yudhishthir had one quality. He never spoke a lie. Lie never entered, or how we say, appeared from his mouth. Uh, that was his ma main principle, the satyam. Uh, truthfulness, never lying, never cheating, always stick to the truth. Although he was a king, therefore he was the best queen, king and the most qualified amongst everyone because he was um, stick to truthfulness, satyam. So Krishna told to Yudhishthir, you know, uh, sorry, tr tr <laughs> Drona doesn't ac accept uh, accept this word that the uh, Ashvatam is dead from from uh, Bhima. You have to go and tell him. But Yudhishthir, at that point, you know, it was uh, against his principle. Even Krishna told him it was very heavy for him to swallow to speak a lie. Uh, it, wa it was against his dharma, against his uh, whole uh, vow, what he took, never to speak a lie. And exactly him, Krishna asked him, you know, speak the lie. And Yudhisthira thought, oh, this will be a sin, this is degradation. Uh, because as soon as I will speak a lie, you know, uh, Yudhisthira didn't touch the ground, uh, he was always not touching the ground. But as soon he spoke the lie, uh, he was on the ground. His feet was on the ground. Uh, and he spoke it. Ashvatama, uh, the elephant, is dead. Ashvatama hata uh, ichigacha. Uh, so Ashvatama is dead. But uh, by Krishna's arrangement, the, the conscience were blowing. Uh, when he told that uh, it is the elephant, because there was an elephant named Ashvatama, and he was dead. He was killed on the battle. But then, because of the loud conscious, woo, uh, Drona only could hear Ashvatama is dead. And he, he uh, put down his armors and his weapons, and uh, in, in this way, uh, um, Trishta Dumna could kill him. So later on, this was accused uh, to uh, to uh, to uh, um, to Yudhishthir Maharaj, you know, that he spoke the lie. Uh, he should not speak a lie. But because he did it on Krishna's instruction, because Yudhishthir. He was not interested in kingdom. He was not in interested in money, in power, in, in uh, fame. He only wanted to please Krishna. Krishna Sharanam. Krishna Sharanam. Uh, this is the, the 26 qualities of Vaishnava. And the most important of quality is Krishna Sharanam. Uh, to take fully shelter in Krishna's lotus feet. Uh, and become attached to him. Krishnaika, actually Krishnaika Sharanam. This is the main quality. Even if the other 25 qualities are not there, but you have this one quality, uh, Krishna, Krishnaika Sharanam, then everything will be fine. Somebody is maybe try to cultivate the other 25 qualities, but not Krishna Sharanam. Hmm? It's good. <coughs> Then maybe you become very famous as somebody who is very honest, somebody who is very uh, truthful, somebody who is very pure, who is very knowledgeable, who is very charitable, who is very nice uh, poetic, uh, who is very merciful, very kind, very 
very yeah, and so and so on and so on. Learn it in the scriptures. Uh, but if he doesn't have this uh, Krishna Ikasharanam, this is all zero without one. I told last time also this example. Uh, if you have many zeros, but one is not there, it's zero. And if you have one there, every zero becomes important. That means every quality becomes important. So Krishna is the center. Krishna, uh, to uh, become attached to Krishna uh, and to as, as more important than anything else. From there, all other qualities gradually become manifested. Maybe somebody is a Brahmana. No? Pra, uh, there's a verse from Srimad Bhagavatam by Paralat Maharaj. From Seventh Canto. Um, text um, 10. It is stated. If a Brahmana has all, all 12 of the Brahminical qualifications, uh, as it is stated in the Sanat uh, Suchata, but, but he is not a devotee, that means he is non bhakta, a bhakta, and is averse to the lotus feet of Lord Krishna, it is certainly. He's certainly lower than a devotee who is a, uh, coming, uh, who was previously a dog eater, but who has uh, dedicated everything, mind, words, activities, wealth, and life to the, uh, to the Supreme Lord. Such a devotee is better than such a Brahmana uh, because the devotee uh, can pu purify his uh, whole family, whereas the so-called Brahmana in a position of false uh, prestige cannot purify even himself. Uh, this uh, from Prahlad Maharaj quoted this verse from Shrima Bhagavatam. Uh, so even if you are a Brahmana with many good qualities and Brahminical qualification, if you have no, if he is not a devotee of Lord Vishnu or Krishna, is not chanting the holy name, uh, not necessarily Krishna, but any name of Krishna. Nam Nama Kari Bahuda Nietzsche Sarva Shaktis. Eh? There are so many different names of the Lord. So the main purpose uh, is to chant the holy name, because if you chant the holy name, who is uh, always uh, pure, Nama Chintamani Krishna Chaitanya Rasa Vigraha Purna Shudanita Mukta Pinatva Nama Namino. The holy name is always liberated, always completely pure. If one chants the holy name, even, uh, even if one is uh, 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 impure or, or pure, doesn't matter, one becomes uh, completely purified, even from purity. Yudhis uh, there is most a pure vir virtual pers virtuous person huh? because he never spoke a lie he was always sticking to the ethics and, and, and of truth huh? so he was very much on the level of the mode of goodness but ultimately he was a devotee huh? and, huh? and because he was uh, speaking the lie for, for the pleasure of Krishna it was not a sin for, for Yudhishthir huh? So therefore, this example is given, uh, even if one uh, is not uh, truthful, maybe sometimes in the service of Krishna or in his occupation, uh, uh, like a businessman also sometimes, uh, as he says, I, with you I cannot make any profit. And he maybe makes some tricks uh, to, make his, uh, to sell his products. Normally, it is a sin, uh, not truthful, it's trickery, stri tricking, uh, false statements, propaganda, uh, and, and uh, but because it's his business, you know, so he, he doesn't get, uh, become sinful by his occupation. So every varna has a certain nature, according to one's nature, one accepts a certain profession, uh, and in that profession, one com commits knowingly or unknowingly some sins. 
But because one is a devotee of Krishna, one is engaged in Krishna's service, one is attached to Krishna, the, uh, one will not become polluted by one's profession. Uh, if one honestly and sincerely engages according to one's nature in Krishna's service, with the time, if one sticks uh, to the process of devotional service, chanting the holy name, hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, associating with devotees, worshipping the deity, then all these uh, uh, material nature and disqualifications, impurities will become washed away. Even purity will become washed away and one will, be, one will become transcendental. Uh, transcendental goodness in the, by all engaging in devotional service to Krishna. So this is all the ultimate goal, uh, but when one is not there immediately, so therefore there are different stages, different levels of advancement. How to ultimately become compu completely purified and entertain uh, love to Krishna. It, it will not come from one day to another, so, but by steady endeavor and by uh, surrendering process, following the surrendering process and uh, chanting the holy name. Even there is uh, sometimes some, uh, uh, how we say, deviation or maybe not so paka in, in life. Uh, some sin maybe is uh, committed. Uh, it is not uh, devastating for the devotee because it is Krishna's promise that I will purify it from within. Uh, all this sin committed by a devotee by accident. Um, uh, so by accident. It's not that way on the, on the purpose, on the statement of this uh, sloka here, or verse from the Bhagavad Gita, we can say, oh, see, everyone who is a devotee of Krishna who, or who claims himself a devotee of Krishna is a, is a devotee the, even if he performs sin. No, it is stated by chance, you know, performing some sin. Uh, not steadily committing a sin, purposefully, and think, thinking, uh, yeah, I will, I will chant Hare Krishna, and in this way I will uh, neutralize the sin. Then it's the seventh offense. It's the seventh offense of Nama Parat. Then we are then, uh, committing Nama Parat. Uh -huh committing uh, offense to the holy name and then we get reaction uh. so it is meant if we are in accidental fall down uh, then Krishna will uh, always try to rectify that and purify it uh, so that the devotee without obstacles ultimately can make more and more advancement in uh, loving devotional service to Krishna. So Krishna helps the devotee because without Krishna's help and without Krishna's mercy, uh, we cannot make any way progress in devotional service. So Krishna knows our weaknesses, but we should not uh, uh, consider because I'm weak and because I have weaknesses, I have uh, so many desires, and uh, therefore uh, still I'm a great devotee. So then one should be humble, because a, a devotee naturally is anyway humble, and he uh, never thinks, oh, I'm an advanced devotee. I'm a very uh, elevated devotee. He always thinks himself very lowly, very fallen, even if he's most elevated. And he always thinks, oh, I committed so many sins, and still committing so many sins. I'm an apparati, I'm a uh, so lowly, fallen person. Huh? But still, he never gives up his prayer and his mood to serve Krishna. Huh? He always prays to Krishna, please give me shelter, despite of my... my unqualification of my sins and my impurities in the heart. I'm so much overwhelmed by this material nature. Be, please be merciful to me because you're the most merciful. You're known as Patita Pavana. So that's how Narutam does. Thakur, for example, he prays. Uh, 
you are the savior of the most fallen, and here is the most fallen. So therefore, I, I, it is my right that you save him first. Yeah. Krishna, is not, Krishna will not save you if you consider yourself, oh, I, here I am Krishna, I am so much qualified. I'm the, I'm, the, I'm the perfect devotee, therefore uh, accept me. No, Krishna only looks at those who are presenting themselves as lowly, as very fallen, but very de dedicated in the prayers, uh, in surrendering to Krishna and accepting help from him. Uh, Narottam also sings, Aha Prabhu Nityananda Premananda Sukhi Kripa Palakana you are always full of Ananda, Nityananda, therefore Nityana, you are Nityananda, full of bliss, but I'm always miserable because of my material conditioning. I'm miserable. Therefore, please take, I, I take shelter in you. Please accept me and uh, give me some drop of your bliss. So therefore, a devotee uh, always uh, repents for his sin, for sins, and for his lowliness and unqualification, and always prays to Krishna, please uh, deliver me, purify me. Of course, I'm ready to go to hell, to, to uh, suffer for all my sins, uh, but please never give me up. Even in hell, that I can stay in Krishna consciousness. Uh, this is my only desire. As a story, uh, there was a Brahmana. Brahmana, as we heard, they're mostly in goodness, uh, satyam, studying the scriptures, they're in mo mode of goodness, uh, they are uh, uh, learned, and so on, uh, pious, pious man, religious. And but he has a neighbor, prostitute neighbor. And the prostitute, as we know, is a low, low profession, low class. So the, this uh, Brahmana, he was always uh, nerfed, he was always agitated about his uh, prostitute. And all the time he was watching her and observing her, what she's doing. And he contemplated more and more about the, about the prostitute. She beca he became more uh, prostitute conscious than religious conscious, <laughs> so to say. So ultimately, uh, both of them came to the point where they had to die. So they were brought uh, to Yamaraj, the, the Lord of Death. And the lo Lord of Death, he told to the Brahmana, you have to go to hell. And the prostitute, you can go to the spiritual world. Then there was a question, how is possible? Brahmana uh, is uh, so, in, I would say, pure soul. Why he has to go to hell and the prostitute so lowly? So the created personality goes to Vaikuntha, to the spiritual world. Then Lord Narayana told, because the Brahmana was always contemplating the prostitute's activities, so he, he's acti uh, he, uh, he became completely polluted by these activities. No? He didn't have to engage himself, but just by contemplating it and by speaking negative and thinking negative about that personality, no? your neighbor, he became degraded, he became sinful, so he, had to, he has to go to hell. And the prostitute, she would always pray, oh Narayan, oh my Lord, somehow or other I'm born in this, in, in, as a prostitute with, with this constitution, with this kind of na uh, nature, uh, lowly, fallen nature. Please deliver me so that I can come to you and be your devotee you know, after, uh, after this life is finished. That was a, a prayer. Uh, and that makes a difference. Uh -huh. The Brahmana, he should actually be God conscious, but he was always thinking negative and criticizing the prostitute. And the prostitute was always praying, please, I'm so fallen, please, my Lord, engage me in your devotional service, deliver me. 
And for we should never criticize and think something bad about others. We should not be fault finders. Because fault finding is, an, is the fault finder is a sinner himself. He becomes faulty himself. Because he is contemplating the fault. And why he can see actually fault? Because uh, the faults are in him. A completely pure soul cannot see fault. Huh? Why? Because he's completely pure. He has no, no uh, consciousness of seeing something negative or positive in the material world. So he was not con he's not contemplating positive things and also not the negative side. So he sees in everything the good. This is the devotee. This is the first class devotee. The first class devotee sees in everyone good. In nobody bad. Even, even, in, even in the bad he sees good. As a saying, you know, as uh, I think it's also from Chanakya Pandit. Somebody who is a uh, sadhu, who is uh, no, no knowledgeable, uh, he knows how to take gold from an impure place. Choosing a wife from a lower family. Uh, the third one I forgot. There's a third statement. Somebody remember? So that means he can he can he can extract the, the essence uh, even from something that is uh, impure. He can take the essence, the nectar. So he can ex uh, he can extract the gold even from an impure place, because gold is always gold, even if it is in an impure place. It doesn't become polluted. Uh. Therefore, a sadhu only sees the gold, he only sees the good quality of somebody. And this is the qualification also of Lord Chaitanya, Nityananda, and all the Vaishnavas following who are servants of Lord Chaitanya. Because Lord Chaitanya only saw the good in others. And, and even, if was, even if there was only a dust particle of goodness there, of a good quality, he magnified a thousand times with the magnifying glass. Uh, but what we are doing, if somebody has a little fault, we're magnifying with our magnifying glass and make it uh, big, bigger, bigger, and bigger, and bigger, as a big catastrophe. And this is our sin. Uh, our, the sin is by contemplating seeing the sin in others. Uh, for Sila Prabhupada, he told, a Vaishnava never criticizes and sees fault in others. Uh, only Guru can find fault in others, in the disciples. That's his duty. But he's not doing it because he's a fault finder, because he, 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 wants, he is able to give the medicine uh, to, uh, to help that person. Uh, so the Guru can do that. He can, he, he can see the fault. Uh, but he's not uh, making this fault as something so big uh, and uh, rejecting you, no. He's an expert chirurg, doctor, huh? with the uh, scalpel. He comes and he makes the operation, you know, of uh, taking out this uh, impurity from you to make it pur purified. Uh, therefore, he can see the fault. He can also point out the fault. Uh, but the disciples should not become angry at Guru. Why are you always looking at me on the fault? No, ultimately is well wish and he can help you and he can uh, rectify you uh, if you are if you are ready to surrender and to accept. Uh, but sometimes we are so obstinate we don't want to accept, we don't want to surrender. And that's why we are in the material world. Uh, because we don't want to surrender. We want to uh, achieve everything on our own. I'm in control. Uh, this is our great uh, Obstacle, uh, this Ishvara complex, control complex. I want to control something I, on my own. I don't need help from outside. Uh, now we have to accept the help from outside uh, because on our own we cannot rectify ourselves. Therefore, Krishna arranges the association of devotees. Uh, 
And only by the association of fa favorable association and service attitude to, to the devotees become, becoming a servant of the servant of the servant of the servant of the servant of Krishna's devotees, we become recognized by Krishna. We cannot surrender directly to Krishna. We have to surrender through Krishna's devotees. And that's how Krishna is setting it up, the surrendering process. And if you have opportunity to uh, become accepted by devotees and engaged uh, in service, in the association of devotees, this is the perfection of life. Uh, and that's what the devotee only pray. Uh, they, they don't play, uh, pray for uh, uh, liberation. They don't pray to become an associate of, the, of Krishna in the spiritual world. They only pray. Let me become the servant of your servant, bird of the bird, uh, wherever it may, may be. Even if it is not a human form, even as an as a insect, let, but it has to be in the house of your devotee. It's Bhakti Vinotakur prayer. Uh. So therefore the devotee uh, always uh, is in se considers himself in, in humble and in lower position, never in elevated position. And on that point, he cannot make sin. There's no sin anymore. Because uh, sin comes when we become proud. And we become arrogant and we consider ourselves better than others. Hmm? Soon you think yourself better than others, that means you're proud. Hmm? So the real devotee never thinks himself, considers himself better than others. He's a, he considers himself the worst of everyone. Hmm? Therefore, I'm the servant. Uh, how can I serve you? How can I please you? This is the attitude, and this is the attitude what Krishna likes to see in the devotee. And then we can chant Hare Krishna Maha Mantra non-stop. Trinada Bhisa Nechana, Tarora Bhisa Hishnana, Amanina Manadena Kirtaniya Sadahari. Uh, to chant the holy name uh, constantly is only possible uh, if we are in a humble state of mind, more tolerant than a tree, more, more lower than a straw in the street, devoid of all false prestige, and always rendering respect, giving respect to others without expecting respect for yourself. That's how we can chant Hare Krishna all the time. Kirtaniya Sada, Sada Hari. Uh, that's how we can chant. And as long as we are not on that platform, then we always struggle with the chanting, we struggle with our sadhana. Uh, sometimes we feel successful, sometimes we feel devastated, ups and down. Uh, this uh, wave of ups and down is uh, natural in one sense for a neophyte sadhaka, uh, neophyte, neophyte in uh, bhakti yoga, this ups and down. But by uh, choosing good association uh, and not being envious to devotees that somebody is more advanced than you and uh, maybe better situated than you, never become envious, never become uh, contem uh, think, oh, I also like to have this or I want to be better than that. Then we cannot get the mercy. So we have to not go in competition with the devotees. We should try to be in the service humble service mood of devotees and I always see the devotees as great and myself as not so much qualified or very lowly. Yeah. And that's how the Kripa and the mercy will come. And then we will never become uh, purif uh, how we say, polluted by the material energy. Okay, I'll stop here. Hare Krishna. Uh, any question? Not only in Kali Yuga, every living entity in the material world has these defects. So, like, uh, Maharaj in Sapiro, people never used to laugh. But now in Kali Yuga, I think I've been scoring perfection here in perfect senses. We cheat and we want to be cheated. And uh, we don't accept facts as they are. Can a devotee um, who is fully engaged in Krishna consciousness rise above these four imperfections? Is it possible?
you know, if you accept the teachings of the Vedas, because the Vedas or the Bhagavatam and the Vedic entire Vedic literatures is above these four defects. Uh, so if you are, uh, if you work according to the, if you develop your faith in this uh, knowledge given by the Vedas and given by the spiritual master, and you are, uh, um, apply this in your life, then you can uh, become purified of these defects. Yeah? Because the Vedas are directly Narayana. Veda Narayana Sakshat. Uh, the Vedas are manifested by the Supreme Lord for our purification. So Levyasadev, he uh, contemplated how to help the living entities in the Kali Yuga who are entangled in the network of Maya. And in, in this meditation, he got the plan, the idea, how to help them. And therefore, he wrote the compiled the Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, and uh, by uh, regularly hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, Nasta Prishu Abhatrishu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. Uh, if you regularly hear Srimad Bhagavatam, everything was, uh, what is inauspicious will become practically destroyed to nil. And loving devotional service to Krishna will become established as an irrevocable fact. That means Nishta, steady devotion, will uh, manifest uh, by regularly hearing Bhagavatam uh, and taking part in Bhagavatam classes. Uh. Actually, uh, to take part in Bhagavatam classes, to hear Bhagavatam, is more important than reading Bhagavatam. Uh, it's more powerful because it's kirtanam. Reading is smaranam, uh, hearing is kirtanam. Shra, shra, uh, hearing Bhagavatam loudly, somebody speaks and somebody hears, and this is kirtanam. So it's more, more powerful, more effective. Uh. As, as Bhagavatam says, uh, uh, what is the verse? Um, that by uh, the, the, the Lord who is uh, within the heart, Srinvatam Svakata Krishna, Punya Shravana Kirtana, Ridhyantak Subhadrani Vidunoti Suritsatam. It means by regularly hearing Bhagavatam or also Krishna Kata. Huh? Srinatam Svakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana. It's, it's transcendental, pious hearing. Uh, so the Lord who is situated within the heart will purify you uh, from all misgivings, from all impurities. Uh, so that these four defects that you are speaking about, uh, these uh, conditionings of the, of the conditioned soul in the material, in the material world will become removed. Uh, You, you agree for that? Yeah. You accept the process? Yeah, that's good. Other question? You were speaking about Krishnaika Sharanam. Krishnaika. And there is a difference between Krishna Sharanam and Krishnaika Sharanam? No, it's just a Sanskrit uh, verb, you know. This Poetry, it's Krishnaika. It's the same. same. Krishna Sharanam. Of course, there's a difference between Krishna Sharanam where, where you live and the uh, Krishna Sharanam of full surrendering to Krishna. That's different. It's not, it's not necessarily because that you live in Krishna Sharanam uh, flats here in Vrindavan that you actually took shelter in Krishna. <laughs> that's, it. that's an illusion. <laughs> it's not that we just uh, buy a, f a flat here in Vrindavan and live here that you surrender to Krishna. You can still, uh, how say, uh, think about sense gratification and you don't live in Vrindavan. F in in, uh, in um, Prema Bhakti Chandrika, Narottam Das Thakur, he says, what is actually Vrindavan? Vrindavan is wherever you think about Vrindavan. And if your consciousness is in Vrindavan, that's Vrindavan. Even if you're outside of Vrindavan. And, if, and, and, uh, and even if you live in Vrindavan, 
but in your consciousness is, uh, has some home pain uh, of your hometown or home outside of Vrindavan, that means you don't live in Vrindavan. You live there. Because we live, there, we, we live wherever our consciousness is. So it's not that we live in Vrindavan, that we live in Vrindavan. So it's, the consciousness also has to live in Vrindavan. And that's the real living. And this you can even uh, uh, achieve if you live in uh, Japan, in America, in Europe somewhere. Uh, no, doesn't matter. In heaven or in hell, Vrindavan is there where we think about Vrindavan. Where we are in the Vrindavan consciousness. Therefore, many, many people have pr problem to come to Vrindavan because they come to Vrindavan with the external uh, expectation of it looks exactly as it is described in the Krishna book and in the revealed scriptures. Uh. But uh, we forget the, the Krishna book and the revealed scriptures, it, it is an, uh, how we say, it, it's, it's a uh, a spirit, it's a spiritual vision of the Vrindavan. Uh, but now, uh, if you see uh, Vrindavan with our material eyes, with the four defects, uh, then uh, we, we only see fault in it, we see mistake in it, we become bewildered by it. Uh, and we become cheaters ourselves. Uh, but what is the greatest cheat? To cheat yourself. <laughs> uh, by be being not honest by yourse to yourself, you know, who, who, uh, and act according to your nature. Uh, and therefore, our real nature is to serve Krishna. Uh, but sometimes we want to imi imitate uh, already an advanced stage of uh, being a servant of Krishna and then we drop on the nose. So we have to go step by step, uh, progressing, uh, not becoming puffed up or, uh, how we say, uh, impatient and try to get an, uh, an unripe fruit from the, from the apple tree without uh, no, without waiting that the apple is ripe. Then we have only stomach pain. And we cannot taste. Maybe you think, I'm tasting apple now, but it's only a sour apple, it's not ripe. So wait until the apple will uh, be ripe and it will drop down. Uh, so many apples in the, in the season time, they drop down. Uh, and that, the, the, these apples are ripe. So we have to be patient and the love of Godhead fruit will come, will drop in your lap, will appear to you on its own. But we cannot jump over the process. We cannot cheat the process. We cannot cheat Krishna. Uh, maybe we can cheat ourselves <laughs> and others, but we cannot cheat Krishna and the process. that we have to understand. Therefore, one has to be honest and uh, always endeavoring, understand our real position. It's very helpless and, uh, and without the mercy we cannot attain anything. Then there is hope. Yes? No, no, no. We don't. We have a process, you know, Hannah. We have a process, and surrendering means uh, to surrender to the process, uh, process of bhakti yoga. Uh, he, so, what is Vrindavan? Uh, what the, what the preacher Bas is here? Uh, what the, what Krishna's dear devotees are doing here in Vrindavan? Only rasa dance. And what they're doing? Play. Huh? Playing. Mm. What they're doing? Don't you don't know. 
Yeah, that's the problem. Uh, we, we don't know what actually Krishna's dear devotees are doing. Uh, who are dear to Krishna, uh, somehow other, why, why these uh, personalities are dear to Krishna? It means they must have something, you uh, know, what Krishna likes very much on them. That Krishna becomes very much attached to them. Become, they even become more important in his life than his own life. Huh? Like Krishna tells to Arjuna, you know. Uh, I cannot live without you. And you cannot live without me. You are like my other part of myself. Uh, so. <laughs> but more, more. <laughs> yeah. So the point, the point is, uh, th um, we, ha we have to. Uh, see Vrindavan by following the footsteps of the inhabitants of Vrindavan. And what they are doing, they hear about Krishna, they are chanting about Krishna, they are attached to Krishna. Even one moment in their life, not seeing Krishna for one moment, uh, they, it appears like 12 years or more. They cannot imagine a life without Krishna. They are always absorbed fully in Krishna consciousness all the time, 24 hours a day, in the in active t time and in the sleeping time, in eating, in breathing, <laughs> all the time, uh, Krishna conscious. That's, that's what, what we try to cultivate through sadhana. Hmm? Fasila Prabhupada gave us so many books. He gave us Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. He gave us other mantras to chant, to sing. Uh, so that we, can, uh, that we can always absorb in the mood of Vrindavan. Uh, in the mood of separation. Uh. <laughs> the, you, you know, uh, it is only painful if you're attached to it. If you're attached to it, it becomes painful, you know. Like something you're attached materially and you, you, you lose it or it's far away from you, you it's very painful. Or a lover, you know, you love somebody who is not with you, so you always think day and night about that lover. So it, it, it is painful. But in the same time, it is also a big relief a great l relief if the devotee in that mood of separation because he feels so much pain in the mood of separation therefore his only remedy is to hear and to chant and to remember Krishna and then he feels relief this is for him like a medicine like an ointment then he feels Krishna's presence because there is no difference between Krishna's name Krishna Katha, Krishna stories Krishna, remembering Krishna, serving Krishna. So all the time he's uh, engaged in that process. And the more we are attached to Krishna, the, the, then the less the devotee can uh, think about anything else. He has no more time. He doesn't want to waste time. He has no more time for, for uh, in thinking about himself and about others, other things in this material world. He loses interest in everything. Only Krishna matters. Krishna satisfaction and of devotees of course you know, who are dear to Krishna. And this is coming just by mercy then this day or uh, yeah it's mercy but you can also try to cultivate it and then you get mercy. <laughs> the process is the mercy. Huh? But you have to uh, then accept it and practice and then you get more mercy. If you only wait until more mercy will come, the mer more mercy will not come. If you don't accept that, be thankful to that mercy what you already got and use it in your life. And be thankful for it uh, and apply it in your life. Then you get more. Don't have to ask for it. Uh, the process, sel pr process itself is mercy. Uh, and the more, the more you engage in it, the more mercy will come. Don't have to ask for it. There's always so many devotees, please give me mercy, please pray for me. It's everything already included. 
because everyone who chants Hare Krishna, everyone who serves Krishna, is uh, because we, we please Krishna with it, everything is included in that prayer and in that process. Uh, otherwise the Guru and the, uh, some, adva- uh, some uh, uh, more senior devotees, always the devotees ask, please, can, pray, can you pray for me? Then he needs a whole list, you know, for whom he has to pray all the time. <laughs> And, and, and it will increase more and more and more and more and more and then in the end, you know, he cannot even uh, pray for himself anymore or for uh, do his own devotional service. <laughs> huh? So we have to understand if, if a Vaishnava chants Hare Krishna, automatically every, every one of his disciples and followers and actually the whole world uh, is benefited from that prayer. And therefore Prabhupada, he told to the devotees, if you chant Hare Krishna Maha Mantra loudly, uh, then it is like uh, ra- radio waves, you know, it is circumvallates, you know, th- throughout the whole globe of, 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 the, of the world. So every, everyone becomes benefited by this sound vibration. Therefore we should chant loudly, not in silence or in meditation. Meditation, uh, chanting, kirtan is more, is better than than uh, meditation. <coughs> Why? Because meditation only helps for yourself. A kirtan, you can benefit so many others. Yep. Yeah, but consider yourself always very lowly. Even if you're very big advanced, you know, it, you still you consider yourself very lowly, very fallen. Never think, consider yourself elevated. Whenever uh, this uh, elevation consciousness appears in your mind, you have to be very careful. Alert, alarm. Shh, uh, problem will come soon. <laughs> it's like ringing bell, you know. Problem will come. Uh, therefore, intelligent, uh, intelligent devotee always uh, uh, realizes himself and keeps himself in lowly position. I'm not enjoyer. I'm not uh, elevated. Uh. And another problem is with the elevation consciousness. If you consider yourself elevated, from that point where you're elevated, you come down. You stagnate, you cannot make further progress. Uh, and for the great devotees, they never consider themselves elevated. And then you can make or, or, or never think, I have attained the goal of life. I attain Prema Bhakti now. Everyone who claims I attain Prema Bhakti is far away from that. Because we can see from those devotees who actually attain Prema Bhakti, they never considered I'm, uh, 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 I'm a Prema Bhakti. Others they can see, but you, you yourself, you cannot see it. Right? Understand? Huh? Ganga. <laughs> Other question? Good questions today. You don't have to see it. It will happen. It will happen. You don't have to see it. Ultimately, it is not the purpose of the devotee. Oh, I'm so pure now. I got, let me uh, chant and uh, go everywhere to purify everyone. 
because I'm a tirta in myself. So wherever I go, I even purify everyone and every tirta, every ho holy place. The what you don't think, like Vidura. Vidura is, he ha, he is uh, Yudhish Dhyamarash told, you are tirta in yourself. Tirta kurvanti tirtani. Yudhish To Vidura. Yeah. You, f you forgot? Dark uh, Kanto. So, so when uh, Vidura returned from pilgrimage, so Yudhishthira Maharaj congratulated him. Bhavat vidi bhagavata bhagavata tirta bhutvas vayam vibo tirti kurvanti tirta ni svantak sena kadabrita. So you, so you are a pilgrimage in yourself. Uh. That means you only go to a, a, a visiting and pilgrimage place to purify them, not to become purified yourself. But this is the mood of Yudhishthir. Yudhishthir always wants to compliment and see the good in others. But the devotee himself, he never thinks like that. Oh, I'm a pilgrimage place. I let me go to the pilgrimage places and, and all the people to purify them. It was not even Prabhupada's mood. When Prabhupada came to the West, the Prabhupada, he came to the West because uh, his Guru Maharaj, he wanted to please his Guru. His Guru told him, uh, go to the West and preach to the English-speaking world. Uh, give them the Shrima Bhagavatam, give them the gospel or the teachings of Lord Chaitanya. That was the main purpose. Lord, of course, Prabhupada had great compassion, uh, the Dikshava Karunika, because Sadhu means he is very compassionate, he is very merciful, very tolerant. Uh, he doesn't see enemy and friend, likes and dislikes. From the Indian point of view, to go to the West is degradation, it's a fall down. Understand? It's a fall down. If a sannyasi leaves Vrindavan, uh, uh, or uh, he was situated in Vrindavan, if he leaves India, Bharat Varsha, and he goes to America or to England, Europe, any, any place outside of Bharat Varsha, he's degraded. He's fallen. Sannyasi should never wear shoes. He should not use any transportation. No, no airplanes, no boats, no cars, no dress, who is uh, so, soon well, made by a tailor, only dhoti, kurta, uh, uh, no, not even kurta, chadar. Uh. But Prabhupada, he accepted so many things, this yuk, yukta varagya, for the, for the <coughs> fulfillment of the mission, because he had mission. Because he saw everything in relation to Krishna and, and to his Guru Maharaj. And so he wanted to serve them, and so he accepted all these things for service. Therefore he accepted shoes, he had to go with the ship, with the boat uh, to America. Uh, he had cars there, he had to deal with money, with uh, building temples. This is normally not sannyasi's business. But the sannyasi is doing it, you know, as a, or accepting it as a service. Uh, to, say, to establish Krishna consciousness. To give uh, new people an opportunity to become Krishna conscious. For himself he doesn't need a temple. Sannyasi doesn't need a temple. A Vaishnava doesn't need a temple. He can l happily live in a, in a little hut, in a kutir. Why he, needs why he makes a temple? Uh, because he wants to give other people opportunity to come in contact with Krishna. Uh, so that was, was Prabhupada's great compassion. So he wanted to make people happy, because he saw that the people are unhappy. And he knew the process, how to make them happy. 
He didn't put himself in the center. He was only like a postman. Guru Acharya is a postman. He just delivers the message. It's, it's, it's not, uh, he's not the enjoyer, not the doer. He's just instrumental you know, from higher empowerment of God himself, Krishna himself. Therefore Prabhupada's mission became successful because he always had this attitude of service and never considered himself the enjoyer. He wanted to just make people happy not by bringing them sense gratification or nirvana, but Krishna consciousness. Okay, we stop here. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Glorious Prabhupada.